Hi everyone, welcome to this month's demo. I've got a good one for you today. We're working with a young dressage horse. So he's come here to get a bit of worldly experience. Um, and it doesn't just help for hacking. When, when this horse goes to shows, or any horse for that matter goes to shows, you've got to be able to get from you know, your lorry to the collecting arena and then in to the show arena. So it's the bits before the actual dressage that I'm working on with this horse. Uh, I took him outside the arena. I don't know, you could probably just about see where I took him. Uh, outside the arena, through the window there you can see, and down the track. Well, I got about, uh, I'd say about five paces down the track. And then I found uh, his little trick. So he sort of stopped. And then I pressed to go forward and he sort of paused and didn't move. And then I just increased the energy a little bit, but I wasn't controlling the front. I was looking, I was allowing him to travel forward. And he instantly, when he went to move, he swung hard to the right. Um, that was his trick. This is, this is uh, the young horse I was telling you, you about. He's not small, that's for sure. You can see I've got my trusty stock saddle on for the first couple of rides. Um, that's as much for my security as anything else and just what I'm confident with and comfortable with. And that's a really important point. When you start working through issues with a horse or with your horse, then make sure you set things up in your favor. And you can see I can see just by the way he's moving his head around and the way he's going, he's a little bit sort of, it could be frustrated or fresh, one of those couple of things. All right, I'm going to do one more thing just with the, with the bridle and a whip just to check forward again. I like to do a bit of close contact work. Okay, so leading off. Now I can feel if I have to pull, then I'll tap him up, which is why I'm in this position. I'll tap him up here just to say step up to my hand. Good boy. Again, yesterday I had a little bit of resistance with this. The forward was um, very hesitant at the beginning when I was tapping. Okay, so um, as soon as you get on, you have a feel of their back. And his back is fine. Although, you know, I think he's, he's heads up, he's looking around, you know, if there was a problem to be had, he'll find it in the state he's in. Um, but I'm going to sit and, and manage him rather than sort of, or wait for things to happen first, just till I get my bearings and see what he's thinking. So this up in that corner, he was a little bit more alert. This corner, his head's slightly lower. He's looking over there a little bit. So I'm just assessing the situation a little bit. And obviously here, where he's been before, he's most comfortable. So I'll probably start to work in and around here because it feels, he feels fine. These little things I'm noticing when he's given the freedom can help me to work in, a, in, a, in an area that's easier to work in until I start to connect a little bit. And uh, then I can start to push it around the school. Um, but my main focus here now is to just create rhythm, relaxation and forward. Nothing else, just start to drop so I, you're in a place where I can start to manage you. If they're tight and tense and, you know, not forward, no rhythm, it's very difficult to start to get them to work correctly. Okay, and this is a hacking frame. And this is what I've been tasked to work on, him hacking. Now, for me, a good hacking frame is all that. That's it, right there. Golden head out, down. You know, you'd like to have the head you know, as, or the head and neck stretch right out and load, not, not in an outline. We're not looking to do that with a, with a horse when we're hacking. We just want to relax and swing. Okay, if the head's up, they don't tend to swing through the back properly. So if you want to get the most out of your hacking, then try to get that nose out. 
if you want to get the least problems with your horse hacking, get that nose out. Whenever you get it, you can do it, follow the gate. That's it, that's how I teach him. And notice I'm not letting him go straight through the gap. I always follow a gate. I keep their nose pointing at the gate and get them to follow it until the gate is really wide open. That horse almost learns to follow the gate first and then be directed around the gate. So that for me is a really important safety aspect of opening and closing a gate. If you try to go through the gap or your horse ducks through a small gap, that's where legs get caught. I mean, your legs get caught. And um, you can end up in a bit of trouble with a small gap. All right, so I'm thinking about my hacking position. I want his nose out and down. There's the stop. And we got a, we've got a really good response that time. The hacking position is great. His nose is out and down. And I'm allowing that to happen. Nervous riders don't allow that position. And this is what exacerbates the problem. They can't investigate where, I'm, where they're walking. So for him, he's got to negotiate that. And off we go. So it took me about... Oh, five minutes to get to this point yesterday because I had about three or four attempts at him going back back to the um, stables but okay so he's got a bit of a jog on now and this is what I found yesterday so I, and this is a good thing to do as well I've just done it just because I had to but can you turn your horse around like this it's such an important tool when you're hacking out that you know going along a narrow track do you feel confident and does your horse feel confident just to bend their body and turn in a small space? He is a big horse and he's got to learn that sometimes if you get a bit stuck, um, you can turn around, you know, follow my lead. Just for me as the rider, my focus is a point just over your head is where I'm, I'm concentrating. I'm trying to keep his focus there as well. So if he looks off that way, little touch back on the, on the straight line. Okay, but always encouraging the head out and down. I'm not looking for contact. I'm not looking for collection. I'm looking for a hacking frame, long and relaxed. Okay, and if I feel like there's one of these horses over here is going to, going to um, be a problem or he's gonna react to it, then I might, have I got my turn to be able to practice? Can I bring him round? Yes, I can. So you can do that, mate. Good. That might be something I need to do to control him if he suddenly decides, right, I've got to go. Instead of blocking that energy and just pulling on him, I redirect that energy and just say, calm, just control it and now move on. And sometimes when I'm riding along, if I feel like they're... they're um, they're a little bit sort of worried and their attention is up and out and they're, they're going to be reactive to something then i'll ride with long arms so if you just stop there pen long arms so long arms and slightly shorter range so my contact is still guiding and still allowing the horse to travel forward but if there's a problem i've got this much elbow maneuverability to control my horse so I can quite easily turn there just by bending my elbow. If I'm riding with short arms and longer reins, so I have the same contact, then when it comes to control a situation where my horse is in this sort of posture, up and looking and ready to react, then uh, I'm going to end up turning. But look where my hand's gone. I'm suddenly out, out of balance and I've got my hand in a very awkward sort of spot. Now, Pen, so I'm just going to ask Penny, who's on the camera, to wait. I'm going to ride down here. He might object to something. There's some horses over there he's looking at. And I want him to take my lead. So when the camera, when Penny's in front with the camera, he could be going, well, this is fine because if someone's going to eat, get eaten it's going to be penny because she's in front of me if he's so over here i've got some a curtain that i hang out of a tree and i get all my horses they, they when they're hacking they're going to go over around and through things so this can be 
you know, an obstacle for him. You can see I've, I've got it quite open. So there's plenty of room for him to get his nose through there. Okay, he's thinking nice and forward. Oh, there's that, there's that spin to the, spin to the right. Okay, I need to be thinking. I, I sort of gave him the benefit of there. But that's where that turning, to being able to do that circle is really important. Now he's investigating this. So that's, that's fine. Allow that to happen. Now there's that little tap. You can see there, he was thinking, I've got to back out of this and go that way, which is what he was doing with, not this, he was doing it just with nothing in front of him. So ask for forward and allow him to have a look. This is, this is a big ask for him. He's looking at this gap thinking, can I really fit through there? So I need to give him a chance. I'm not going to force this. If I put too much energy in now, that energy is going to overwhelm him and push into panic. So at this point, when he's investigating and thinking about where he's going, I'm going to give him some time. He's in a learning phase. Now he's switched off. He's looked elsewhere. So I'm going to engage him again by asking him to step forward. Sniffing. This is good. He's investigating. You need to encourage this when you're with horses that are going hacking. Let them have a look. Now, not that way. The answer isn't to move away from it. There's a gap there. I want you to see if you can find it for me, mate. He's just checking, what are these things that I might have to go past? So there it is there, he's checking again. These things are moving a little bit as well in the breeze. And for me, I've got to teach him or show him that there's a gap and to put his head through. So is he going to find it there? Good boy. Okay. And he's jogged off. Get in time with him. Relax and allow him to come back. Don't make a big deal of it. He's gone through there really, really nicely. So you could see his old trick was there, but it was much, much softer than it had been previously. But we're also looking, as I said before, to go over, around and through obstacles. Because when you're out hacking, you never know what you're going to get. Which is why some people might say, well, why, why do that? Why put a horse through this? Because I want them to have confidence in me, in that I'm saying, mate, it's all right to go through there. And, and so it is. Okay, he's come round. Good, good boy, well done. Okay, he's rushing through there a little bit, but I, um, that is absolutely fine for the moment. And you have to embrace that as well. When you're going through ob obstacles, people get worried about what's gonna happen the other side. Make sure you're confident with doing a turn and allow that little rush to happen. You can, you can imagine yourself, you're sort of going through something you're not sure about. You just want to get it done. So you get through it. And once you get through it, you go, you get that sense of, I did it and I'm all right. And that's the start of building confidence. Whereas if you go through it and you get this sort of, oh God, and pulled, you're thinking, the horse will be thinking, well, I went through it, but I don't want to go through and be pulled again. So you have to be a little bit aware of your feel when you're going through these sorts of obstacles. And except they might just rush a little bit, but that's okay. I know I can do a circle, bring you around and it's fine. And then eventually what happens is they start to get their confidence and realize, it might take a few days sometimes, they start to realize that actually I can go through here. I don't need to panic because nothing happens. Nothing does happen. And that's the stepping stone to building confidence. And there we go, we're starting to see that now. So that's brilliant. 